Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings and today I'm not going to be talking about specific items I'm going to be giving you a rough idea of what I'm doing in the next week because I am the resident expert for Smithsonian Journeys in the coming week and I'm going to be going with a number of people on a tour talking about crime writers, crime writing, how I do it, how other people do it and all that sort of stuff, which means I've got to prepare myself. Now, the obvious things are that a crime writer like me, as an expert, needs to take writing materials. So I was thinking, what pens should I take? Now, the obvious pencil I will take is the Faber-Castell Perfect Pencil, because that is always in my pocket. I think it's ingenious, I think it's simple, it is usable as an extender, it's got its own sharpener, it's just a brilliant little gadget to keep with you. But I'm going to need other things. I will need a pen with some red ink and some office type ink. So what I have here is my Pilot Metropolitan, that's going to be coming with me. It is a fantastic pen, I really enjoy using it. and. It is currently filled with writer's blood, so it's a sort of goodish red ink that is a little bit more subtle than the usual glaring passion red that I have, for example, in my Visconti Crystal Dream. I'm not going to take this with me. I love it, but I don't need something that valuable on a long trip. So instead, I think what I might do is fill my Opus 88 demonstrator with some more of this delicious KWZ Baltic Memories ink, which is really good for business use, looks smart, and I love KWZ inks because they have that wonderful odour of sort of vanilla and coconut, which is great. As an additional ink, I'm... Uh, pen rather, I may well take my Conway Stewart Drake because it's currently fitted with my new nib which as I said in the last video is just blowing me away, it's wonderful. I will need to take some more ink with me, I'm probably going to take my Visconti ink reservoir but I'm also going to take a Pineda ink reservoir. This will have I think sepia or writer's blood in it and the Visconti reservoir will have or the travelling inkwell is what they're both called the Visconti version will probably have more KWZ or I might fill it with Blue Mar actually from Rora and Klingner I do love that stuff what else am I taking? well I've got to take my talk uh, I'm giving a lecture on the first day which is going to be just knocked a torch over, which is going to be great fun, I hope. Trying to get things organised and efficient, I'm going to be taking one of these. These are Exacompter file systems, and I find them really useful when I'm going away on something like this. I can keep my presentation in it, I can keep notes on the different places I'm going to, notes on the different authors I'm going to be talking about, makes life a lot easier. But of course I will also need something which will allow me to make additional notes. So I will be taking my Atoma A4 notebook which is brilliant. It's A4 and it has paper which is cut out in the same way as my William Hanna notebooks because I'm going to be taking these two with me as well. So I'll have an A6, an A5 and an A4 notebook with me which will make life a lot easier when I'm out and about trying to make records of things. I will also be taking books with me. This one in particular, The Complete Secret Notebooks of Agatha Christie by, what's his name, John Curran. John Curran is an Irishman who had full access to all of the Agatha Christie um, 
archives, I believe. And one of the things that he found was that, well, basically he went through the 73 notebooks that Agatha Christie left behind. And they're fascinating. There's a real treasure trove of information in there if you can decipher the writing. Because Agatha Christie would basically make a note all the time when she was out and about or at home. She would just grab for the nearest notebook, find the first free page and start writing. And one of the things I find really fascinating about her is that there is no logic whatsoever to these notebooks. They're all numbered 1 to 73, but the numbering is just designed for an archivist. It has no bearing whatsoever on Agatha Christie, what books she was writing on, when she was writing them, or anything else. She would have, for example, pages and pages of notes on different books, and they would be books back in the early 1920s. And then she'd have a, a book that she was working on in the 1950s, and then it would go back to books on the 1920s, because she would literally pick up a notebook, open it, and start writing. And so it could well be that she'd missed out 10 pages beforehand. So many years later, next time she picked up that particular notebook, she'd find that one of those blank pages and she'd start writing on that. So the timeline is not logical. She didn't go through sequentially. She just wrote on the first bit she could find. I very much doubt she actually had to refer back to these notebooks. I certainly don't find that myself. Um, it's just the case that the fact of writing things down locks it in your memory to an extent. So that's interesting. What else am I going to be taking? Well, I'm going to be taking copies of The Last Templar from Canelo, which is now out and ready to be purchased, as is Merchant's Partner, reprinted now by Canelo, and it's a wonderful story, really good book. And, of course, The Merchant Murderers, which will be coming out, I think, on the 4th of October next week, which is just a brilliant book. And someone has contacted me in the last few months and said, oh, when The Merchant Murderers comes out, please let me know because I'd like to buy a copy. And that conversation was either via email or Instagram or Facebook or might have been Twitter could have been any number of different social media contacts. I should apologise, by the way. The sunshine is coming up and then the sun is disappearing behind clouds. So you'll find that my face goes bright and then shortly again it'll go very dark again. Anyway, yes, uh, whichever mode of contact the gentleman contacted me on, um, I cannot find it. So I'm really sorry. I can't find your name. I can't find your details. There is one copy of Merchant Murderers that will be kept back just for you. But please get in contact, um, ideally by email. If you go to my website, michaeljex.co.uk, there is a contact the author button there. So just hit that and um, let me know. And in fact, that goes for anybody who wants to have a copy of one of my books. I've got a number of The Last Templars. I've got a number of Merchant's Partners. And I've got hundreds of other books from previous publishers. So please let me know if you want to take any of them because that will free up some bookshelves and I could do with that. So what else am I taking? In terms of writing stuff, really, that's about it. I will be taking a full set of paints and a paint box. I might have a spare hour or two to do some sketching, but not more than that, I shouldn't think. From personal experience with Smithsonian Journeys on the golden age of crime writing tour, which is effectively what this is. In fact, it's called... I'm going to go and check because I can never remember the name because the name has changed a few times over the last couple of years. So just looking it up, here we go. And Smithsonian is the star shape. It's the Mystery Lovers England now. Um, it used to be... A different title but now it's the mystery lovers england and it's smithsonian journeys if anyone's interested there's a second one happening not next week but two weeks after so the departure date will be october the 15th till the 23rd of this year if anybody wants to come on that 
bit short notice, I know. There's also September the 3rd to October the 8th next year already booked. That'll be fun too. So, what else am I going to take? I'm going to take a book to read. I'm actually going to take a Kindle this time because I've got a, a certain amount of research I want to do into a couple of aspects of life. So that's going to be quite interesting to um, be able to experiment with a Kindle and see what or how I get on with it. I'm not convinced, I have to say. But this sort of thing can be useful. I'm going to be taking my laptop computer, which by a complete miracle still works. I originally bought this in about 2013. It's a MacBook Air, one of the very first that came out. And it's a brilliant device, but I haven't used it since I travelled to New Zealand for my brother's death back in 2020. And I haven't charged it, I haven't done a thing to it. I turned it on the other day and it was dead. So I plugged it in to see what happened and it worked. Not only did it work, it retained its battery charge for 24 hours, which I thought was pretty astonishing for a battery that's nine years old. So I'm, in, I'm impressed with that. I'm very pleased with that. And um, beyond that, no, that's pretty much about it, I think. So pens, various inks in travelling ink wells. The Pineda one I haven't actually used in uh, in anger yet so i'm looking forward to testing that one out the viscontis i have used and i find them fantastic if you haven't used traveling ink wells these things basically just mean that you can take rather than an entire bottle of ink you can take two or three refills and it means you've got ink while you're on the go without making a mess everywhere that's nice and i have to admit i'm looking forward to this why am i looking forward to this well I have recently been in touch with Dante Del Vecchio, who, for anybody watching, he is, we all know, our, our hero of pen design and pen manufacture. It was Dante who helped set up Visconti in the first place. He set it up with a partner. The two partners had a falling out and Dante left the company, sadly. But he then joined Pineda, these chaps, and he has basically started making the most fabulous pens with Pineda. I'm not sure if Pineda is how you pronounce it. It's one of those strange names, but uh, it looks logical to me that it would be called Pineda. So I've been talking to him mainly because I've heard that Pineda do flex nibs. And I've always wanted to try one. So I asked him, would it be possible to borrow a pen? And he said, yes, not only possible, he will arrange for it. So there is a pen on its way to me now. Sadly, the Royal Mail is going on strike for the next two days, so I won't be able to take it with me and test it while I'm out and about with Smithsonian. However, it will be here when I return on Tuesday the 11th of October, so I'll be able to hopefully give it a good test and play with on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and put a review up with luck on the Thursday. Depends. What I want to do is really give it a good test and a good play with. So if I can't do that, I might take it on the next Smithsonian, Smithsonian Journeys Tour which will be the 15th to the whenever, and then review it in the week after that. But I want to do it justice because everything I've seen about the Grand Belletta and the Avatar range says that they're fantastic pens. So I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that. And that, I think, is about it. I now have to go make sure that my lecture and the slides are all functioning and good. I have to get the lecture slideshow organised on a memory stick. And I also have to load it onto my MacBook Air. So I've got two means of using it as a presentation. Yes, and then I have to run through my lecture itself, make sure that that fits into about 45 minutes with time for questions afterwards. 
and then start planning all of the things I need to pack, clothes, for example, and all the other stuff I'm going to need to do, which is a lot to do in the next couple of days, especially since I've got to also produce some Patreon information for people. So wish me luck. I've got a lot of work on. And now I'm going to leave you and crack on with it. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope that was interesting. Very sorry about the sun coming out and hiding again. And I doubt whether I'll be able to get anything much up next week. I will if I can, but it'll be a case of recording short notes on my phone, probably. If I can, I'll get that done while I'm away with the Smithsonian. Otherwise, it's a case of waiting till the week after. And I look forward to seeing you then, if not before. Right. Thank you very much. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.